Hello bookworms! Today I'm here with my September book haul. I feel like I didn't get too many books this month, but it does look like a large pile that's sitting next to me, so maybe I got more than I thought I did. I don't know. I did actually get a bunch of comics and, um, and manga this month, but I think I'm gonna wait again until I have a little bit more to do like a combined haul like I did recently. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go in the order that I always go in, starting with all of the new releases from September. So one of the first books that I got this month was Empire of Storms by Sarah J Maas. This I was anticipating so much because I read Queen of Shadows in, in August and I loved it. And I really, really just cannot wait to continue the story and to find out what is going on with Selena and her like, whole squad because they're just amazing and it got really good so I'm really looking forward to it. For those who don't know it's the fifth book in the Throne of Glass series but I'm sure that you all do but I just wanted to say that and that's why I'm not giving a full synopsis. The next book that I picked up is Crooked Kingdom by Leigh Bardugo. Um, this is the second book and final book in the Six of Crows duology and I read Six of Crows in the month of August for our Spines with Wines book club which finally happened after lots of coordinating and I'll leave a link to that down below in case you didn't see it but I'm really looking forward to jumping into this one now that I know how great Six of Crows was um, and I really really love how this edition is. It's just as beautiful as the first book and I love that it has the red pages. I think it just like adds so much to it and it looks so unique and just so beautiful and I think they look so great together and I'm so excited. And then also actually along with Six of Crows there was a pre-order deal so if you sent in your receipt um before the book came out proving that you pre-ordered it you also got this really cute little um like package that says crooked kingdom and inside of it is the really fun thing um it has some dice and these are the instructions on how to play but um it's actually like a six of crows game and it has all of the characters names on these dice um you can, i'm sure that it's like too far away to see but um each one has like a little symbol and it's just so cute and i definitely want to play this at some point then I got As I Descended by Robin Talley, and this is a lesbian retelling of Macbeth. It sounds really, really interesting. I love that concept, and I cannot wait to read this one. Then I have Sometimes We Tell the Truth by Kim Zarens, and this book sounded really interesting to me because this is a modern-day retelling of the Canterbury Tales. Um, and it follows a group of kids who are on a field trip and they're all on a bus together and there's a contest to see who can tell the best story and then whoever does is going to win a prize. Um, so it just sounds really cool and it's going to be like lo lots of tales that are just told along this bus ride. Then I have The Graces by Lori Eve. And this is actually our October book for Spines with Wines because it follows a group of witches and a girl who desperately wants to infiltrate that group for some reason, but we don't know why going into it. It sounds really good and I'm really looking forward to reading it. And also this book is just beautiful. Like I love this cover so much. Um, and then if you open it too, it's even really pretty without the jacket on. It has this beautiful gold and on the spine. I just think like this book was just done so well. Um, so I'm really looking forward to reading it and October is the perfect month to be reading about witches because I am all about that Halloween spirit. Then I have The Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis and I am really excited to read this book but I have a very funny story about it. Not really very funny but I have a story about it. So when I was at BEA this year this was on the table and you could pick it up along with Three Dark Crowns. And I saw this cover and I was like, nope, not for me. Then I come to find out that this book is basically pitched as the female Dexter, which I was obsessed with that show. So obviously I wanna read this immediately. And I'm just so disappointed in myself that I like, did not pick this up because this is honestly like one of the worst covers of the year in my opinion, but it sounds really, really good, and I could have had the opportunity to read it earlier, but I choked there, so oh well. But I'm excited to have it now, and I know that it is like a very serious book, and it covers a lot of serious topics, so there are a lot of trigger warnings that go along with it. I know that it does talk about rape, um, and then it also follows a girl who has these 
murderistic tendencies. So if that's something that you're sensitive to, then you might not want to read it. But I hear that it's a very good and very important read. So I'm really looking forward to to reading the story. Then I have another book that is great for Halloween, and that is Stalking Jack the Ripper. This is by Carrie Maniscalco. Um, and it's part of James Patterson Presents. So this looks really good. I love stories about Jack the Ripper, so I'm really, really into this whole idea. Um, but it follows this girl who lives in Victorian London during the times that these murders are going on, and she's supposed to be like a very proper society woman, and um, instead of like following all of the social paradigms of that time, she goes off on her own and she's trying to like solve this murder at night when she's really not supposed to be doing that. So it sounds really good and I'm really looking forward to reading it. I heard that it is very, um, it's like a very light historical fantasy. It's, it's very accessible and the language isn't necessarily very reflective of the time. Um, so yeah, I think it's something that I'm going to be able to read really quickly and I'm definitely planning on reading it in October. Then I have Bright Smoke Cold Fire by Rosamund Hodge. And this book is a retelling of Romeo and Juliet. I don't know too much about it other than that, but I do know that Rosamund Hodge wrote um, Cruel Beauty and that is a Beauty and the Beast retelling and that's supposed to be very good. So as soon as I heard about this one, I was also interested in it and I like the cover. So I was like, buy that. So I did. There were so many new releases this month. <laughs> Then I have Three Dark Crowns by Kendare Blake. This is one that I've been talking about nonstop. It's one that I got an arc of at BEA that I, it was like my most anticipated book of the year and I still haven't read it. Um, and I was really sad to hear that it hasn't been getting the best reviews. So that's also why I've been a little bit hesitant because I feel like I'll be crushed if I don't love it since I was so excited for it. So I'm kind of waiting a little bit until I get into it. Um, but fortunately, one of my coworkers read it the other day and she was raving about it. So that made me feel a lot better and have a lot more hope. It's, so it's about three queens who all grow up in different areas and only one of them is going to, sorry, three sisters, and only one of those three sisters is going to become the queen. And in order to do that, she has to kill the other two sisters first. So I think that this book is gonna lay a lot of groundwork for like the rest of the series. It introduces you to all of the three queens. I hear that Two of them are very unlikable and one of them is kind of likable. So that could also be why people are struggling with it. Um, but I really have very high hopes for it despite those poor reviews. So I'm just waiting until I can block them out of my mind and then go into it fresh. <laughs> then I have Stealing Snow by Danielle Page. And this is a Snow Queen retelling. Um, it follows a girl who is in a mental institution and then she like breaks out and she escapes into these woods and then there's all this fantastical stuff that is going on. Um, and it sounds really good. And this book is like a lot more beautiful than I was even expecting. Um, the letters and stuff are very reflective and I love the snowflakes and just the broken mirror is gorgeous. So I'm looking forward to reading this one as well. So those are finally all of the new releases. Like it's kind of unbelievable how many new releases there were this September. But now I have a couple of other books that were not new releases, but they're books that I picked up for the month. The first one being My Lady Jane, which is actually by three authors. It is by Jodie Meadows, Brody Ashton, and Cynthia Hand. It follows Lady Jane Grey. It's like historical fiction, but it is um, as if like she had lived longer. And supposedly it is really funny. So I'm really looking forward to reading this one. I actually was like a little bit hesitant on it at first because sometimes I don't love historical fiction. So that's why I waited on it. But everyone that I know that's read it has loved it and has talked about how funny it is. So I was like, okay, you know what? I better give this one a chance. Then I got a couple of books when Andrew and I went to that most beautiful Barnes and Noble ever in Baltimore. Um, I'll leave a link down below to my vlog of it because it was just like, breathtaking. I want to go back there. It was like the most beautiful bookstore ever. So <laughs> while I was there, I got three books. The first one being The Assassin Game by Kirsty McKay. And I have not really heard anyone talk about this one, but it sounds really cool. Um, it's about a girl who goes to a boarding school and there's like a secret society that's going on. And I think like the initiation every year is called The Assassin Game, but the stakes are really high and they, I think like lines get blurred and it seems kind of dangerous and then 
I don't know exactly what happens obviously because I haven't read it yet. It just sounds really good to me and it doesn't even have that many reviews on Goodreads but the ones that I did read were positive so I'm definitely looking forward to checking this one out. Then I got Diary of a Haunting by M. Verano and this I picked up because it's the time for scary reads so I figured this was one that I will potentially read this October. It's about a girl who moves to Idaho with her mom and then all of these like weird things start happening in her house. Um, and it just sounds scary and I really like scary books so I'm looking forward to this one. Then I have Little Black Dresses Little White Lies by Laura Stampler and this book has like a very Sex in the City vibe to it. It follows a girl who moves to New York City and she's really excited and she gets this job giving dating advice for, I, I believe it's like an online blog because I just can't imagine that it's like a magazine or a newspaper, but I could be wrong. The thing is though, she has never dated anyone. So she's this completely unqualified person that is gonna be giving dating advice to people who are looking for help. So it should be really funny and I think that she tries to do some field work so that she gets that experience Experience and she also learns from like friends and roommates and stuff so it should be really funny. Um, it just looks like a cute contemporary. Then I got two classic books to add to my collection. I got The Legend of Sleepy Hollow by Washington Irving but I thought that this was a good one to just reread around Halloween. It's been a really long time since I've read it and I've also really wanted to go to the town of Sleepy Hollow this Halloween just to like roam around and see what there is going on because I've never been there before and it's not terribly far from where I am. So I thought that would be like a fun little trip. Um, and I also just really love the Penguin Words Classics editions. So I figured this was a good one to add to the collection. Then I have a very heavy book and that is The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas. This is one of my favorite books of all time. It's definitely my favorite classic book that I've ever read, but it is enormous. These are very thin pages. This is like I think this book's almost 2,000 pages. Like it's, I think it's the longest book that I've ever read also, but it's so good and it's so worth it. Um, and I really, really like this edition. It's a Penguin cloth bound classics edition. I think the, the like teal color is really pretty and I just love all of these like different masks that are on here, especially because the main character is uh, someone that undergoes a huge transformation in order to take revenge on people that wrongly imprisoned him. So I think that's like just a fun way to to put that on because he's wearing like the mask of a different person. He's fooling all of these people and it's just so good. Like if you like revenge stories you absolutely have to read this one. I promise it is interesting. It is not like a boring classic. It is a thrill. <laughs> and then lastly I showed you guys last month that I got the um, Hermione box from the Noble Collection from Barnes & Noble. So I had another coupon this month. So I got the Harry Potter box. Um, and I'll open it and I'll show you guys what's inside of this one too. So first there is this lenticular photo of the Order of the Phoenix, which is so cute. I love it. Um, and then let's see what else is in here. We have Harry's acceptance letter into Hogwarts. I don't know if you can totally see it, but it has his address, Mr. H. Potter, the cupboard under the stairs for Privet Drive, as we all know. Um, it has a little Hogwarts seal on the back and it has the letter inside from Professor McGonagall inviting him to attend Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. I actually have to say it's really funny but the letters that Andrew made for me when he proposed I think are much better quality than these which is very interesting and good for Andrew. <laughs> then oh my gosh there's a letter from Lily to Sirius um, and it kind of looks like it's an unfinished letter so I'm I'm looking forward to reading that. Then we also have a ticket to um, the final game in the Quidditch World Cup, which was Ireland versus Bulgaria, which took place in the fourth book in the Goblet of Fire, as we all know. Then there's this little Hogwarts Express um, luggage tag, and it's actually like much heavier than it looks. It's, it's like metal. And then I don't wanna undo these because they're in such adorable little ribbon things. So, but one of them is a wanted par wanted poster for Sirius Black. Oh, and the other one is Dumbledore's Army's signatures list. So that's really cute. Hopefully next month there will be another Barnes and Noble coupon and I'll be able to get the Ron box and show you guys that in my next haul. Um, so that's all that I have for this video. Let me know if you've read any of these books. Let me know what you've been buying this month. Um, and I will see you guys soon with a new video. Bye!